Hi, my name is uh, Franco Sancho. I'm going to be, well, I'm going to teach the practice number three, where we are going to talk about Atlas TI. That is a software, a qualitative software to do qualitative data analysis. Uh, this explanation is going to be part of the subject market research one, qualitative of the degree in marketing uh, at the University of Alicante. So let's going to begin with the, well, with some slides, we are going to do some introduction to the, um, to the software. And afterwards, we are going to see a little bit how it works. So uh, what is Atlas TI? Atlas TI is a software that is uh, basically used uh, to do this course analysis. It was created in Berlin, in Germany, at the end of the, the, the 90s, the 80s, beginning of the 90s. Uh, and it, it performs specific analysis, uh, it's an analysis across a large data set of documents, notes, uh, multimedia files. This uh, package, this uh, package allows to extract, categorize and interlink fragments of data. We are going to see how we call this fragment of data in the, in the future. Why is so popular this program Atlas TI? Well, first of all, we have to say that we have selected Atlas TI because the University of Alicante has the registration for the, its version number seven. There are many other softwares that are as good as Atlas TI. Uh, that could be, for example, MaxQDBA, uh, Aquad, and so on. But in this case, we are going to work with Atlas TI. Uh, it's very important, it's very popular because it allows uh, managing a large data sets. Large data sets, for example, with many documents uh, or with many videos or different types of resources that we can use. So the, the potential of this software is uh, very, very, very good. It also allows analyzing different types of data. For example, text. Uh, you can analyze articles, academic articles, newspaper articles, uh, any kind of information coming from text, tweets, uh, things that people says in social networks and so on. Also graphical images, for example, uh, images coming from advertising campaigns or any other kind of images, or in, uh, even video. Video is very interesting, the, the, the functionalities to analyze video. So this is, these are some of the characteristics. It is also very intuitive and easy to use. We are going to see this later. It provides organizational synthesis and management capacity. We can have all the documents together when we, uh, in this way we can avoid having different folders in different, uh, in different uh, softwares. We can have everything together. Uh, it allows to work in teams, to, to work in teams. That means that many, imagine there are two or three people working in the same document. We can create the individual documents and afterward uh, as we, I said, uh, hermeneutic unit fusion or the option that is called in English, the merging. We are going to see how to merge, how to fusionar uh, uh, hermeneutic units. It's very easy to learn. And also there are many resources, free resources like uh, manuals, videos, and so on, in YouTube and so on. So let's going to see a little bit how we are going to work. We are going to, have the, our hermeneutic unit it will, is going to be uh, com conformed by different layers, different levels. In the first level, we have the PDF uh, primary documents. The primary documents, in our case, in PDF. That would be the transcriptions of the in-depth interviews or the transcription of the focus groups. We are going to uh, prepare everything in Word uh, as we saw in previous, in previous videos. For example, we, we, we would uh, support ourselves with Dictate or any other transcription software. And once we have everything prepared, we are going to transfer, uh, to uh, convert this into a PDF file. So we are going to feed the program with a PDF file as we are going to see later. In, next, in, in the next video, in, in practice number four, we are going to begin with textual analysis, where we are going to basically read all the transcription and trying to underline in color the different uh, sentences or paragraphs that we think could be related to the objective of the study. These uh, this, uh, sentences that are uh, 
uh, underlined are called quotations or citations. And if we have any comment that we, uh, through uh, when we are um, uh, reading the, the transcription, if we, are, we, we have very, uh, any comment that could be useful for, for further analysis, we can write a memo. We will see later what a memo is. And in, 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 the, in the third level, we are going to analyze these uh, sentences at a conceptual level. In our case, when we are talking about conceptual level in the studies we are doing in the subject, we are talking, for example, about customer experience, the different generators of customer experience, or the different steps or stages of customer journey map, and even the characteristics of the individuals that the profile of the individuals that visit your uh, company. These are the things we are going to look for, conceptual level. So we are going to categorize, we are going to code the different sentences, with, we are going to give a code or assign a code that could be helpful for later analysis. We're going to see this how, how it works. And finally, in the last sessions of the subject, we are going to analyze uh, from an, uh, the, the, the ideas, all the codes. We are going to try to uh, uh, analyze, if, the, analyze is, if there are relationship between them at our organizational level. This part is a little bit more complex and we are going to spend one or two sessions. So, uh, what is the hermeneutic uh, unit? The hermeneutic unit basically is the project, the project the, where we are going to work uh, in. We're going to see the later, we are going to open one and we are going to see how it works. And these are the things you have to take into account. These five elements are basic. The primary document are the files that you are going to upload. The files we are going to analyze. In our case, the transcription, but it could be, for example, audio, it could be video, it could be GPS location and so on. The, the second thing at the textual level are the quotations, the citations. This is the idea that we are going to, first of all, underline the important sentences that we are going to use later on. Once we have uh, identified all these important sentences that could be or are related to our objectives, we are going to code them. We are going to categorize them depending on the type of study. The, the previous thing that I said about customer experience, a customer uh, journey map, is for the study of the subject. But if you are uh, analyzing any other thing, the codes would be different. Uh, in a different level, the network are the diagrams we are going to create to relate different codes and family, families of codes. And finally, the memos. The memos, as I told you, are nodes that we could think that are useful for example, know that come from, uh, from the viewing or watching the uh, videos. Uh, for example, he smiles, he's angry, things that are not in the words, but could be interesting for the analysis. Things, for example, methodological memos and so on. So the Hermeneity unit is going to put everything together in one document. So whenever we have to, uh, continue working, we have we are going to have everything in the same document anytime. And this uh, last document, one second, please. Sorry, there were a problem, there was a problem. This last element, this is a, a kind of graph that we are going to analyze at the end of the semester. In this case, is what we've said, the network. We have created different codes. These boxes are different codes where we put different elements that could be related to our study. And at the end of the semester, as I told you, we're going to drive or uh, draw uh, some relationship or establish some relationship between the different codes. That could be interesting for our analysis. Don't worry, this is going to be done step by step. So how to open or install uh, Atlas TI? In the case of the University of Alicante, we have uh, the, the university is registered to Atlas TI in, in its version very seven. So what we have to do is to connect to our U, UA cloud uh, to the link called, or the, the icon called Red UA here at the bottom. When we click here, there is going to be an open, uh, the, this, uh, this uh, window is going to pop up 
and you have to click where it says a key. When you click here, you can download the application at your own computer. If you are at the university, you can use it, but if you are outside the university, you need to download the application. Be careful with the firewall and any, any, anything that in your computer that can avoid or restrict this download. Once you have downloaded, execute the X uh, file and you are going to open a, a window like this is going to be open where you put your username and the password and you click red UA. By doing this, you are going to connect to a remote computer to the server of the university, wherever you are. And you're going to see that this is the computer. This is the, um, this is the, um, um, the, the desktop of the computer in the university. Be careful that this is in the University of Alicante, it's not your computer. We are going to see how to download everything we do in our own computer. Because if we don't do that, the, that uh, everything is going to be downloaded in the server and we are not going to have access. So if we click on red UA file, uh, sorry, folder, uh, this is going to open all this, uh, this uh, software that the university is registered and it pays the fees and you click on Atlas TI and the working area pop up. At the, at the top, we see we have the bot, the menu, everything, all the functionalities are uh, here. Uh, also, we have the main tools below that this is to do things without opening all the whole menu. The same thing that uh, in the tools that we have in the left part of the of the working area. Don't worry, we are going to help open it in two minutes. Uh, before we, we open the program and I show you how to do it, uh, I recommend you to download the uh, user guide and reference. This is a book, a free book, that is going to, that, that where they explain everything we are going to, to do in class uh, with more detail. You can also uh, view videos of other people in YouTube, there are, there are many. I'm going to prepare useful material, but of course there are many, many material that is very useful. So let's go into uh, open the program. How to do that? So let's go into C. My computer, I click, I look for Red UA, same that I tell you, I downloaded the Red UA document, uh, sorry, file, and here we see Red UA. We execute this and it opens. I put my name, a user. And I click accept. And as you see, as you see, it opens as I told you, okay? This is, this screen you are, you are watching now, it's not my computer, but it's the uh, server of the University of Alicante. So we open Red UA and we see all the softwares that are registered, as I told you. And here, here we have the software we are looking for, Atlas TI. One second. If I click twice on Atlas TI, it's going to and it opens. 
we enlarge the, the document. And as you see, we are going to, the program is in, or the software is in Spanish. So the first thing we are going to do, we are going to go to herramientas, tools. We are going to uh, preferences or preferencias in Spanish. And we are going to change the language of the user to English. Accept. It says, okay, you have changed the language, but you have to, you, you need to close the program and reopen it in order to have everything in English. This is what we do. And when we, once we do this, we can open the, the software and we can see that everything is in English. Okay. Let's go into um, surf a little bit uh, throughout the, the, the software. This uh, nowadays, now as you see, there are no uh, documents open. Let's go into see the different menus. Project. In project, we have new hermeneutic unit to create a new project, to add or open a new document, to open a previous document, something that you used, you did before, and it's a new one, and many other things. Save, save us if you want to save your project. Merge, there are many edit comment, merge hermeneutic units. That this is the idea if you are working with two or three, we can merge them, which you can we can put these two together. We are going to see this next week. Add documents, we can incorporate new documents, create or incorporate. And we see here one menu for the quotations, textual level. One uh, menu for the codes, contextual or conceptual level, and one level for the networks. Well, for the memos, we're going to use the memos throughout the, the, the analysis, and one mem one uh, network, one menu for the networks. And there are a couple of a couple of more that can be useful for future analysis. Let's go to create the first hermeneutic unit. In our case, project new hermeneutic unit. Let's see, new hermeneutic well, project, new hermeneutic unit. And here we have a new hermeneutic unit. Sorry, it opens, it seems here, sorry. It's a little bit slow because I'm working. So once we have the hermeneutic unit, what we are going to do is to save it, save us. But if I save it here, now at the moment I'm working at the server of the unit, not in my computer. So I need to look for C, this computer C, C, C letter. C, it's my computer. How can I check that it's my computer? Well, I open, one second, it's opening the different files, and I see that in my computer, I have all the thing, all the different programs. It's a little bit slow, as I told you, because we are working in a server. It's a little bit slow, sorry. We are going to create a new folder that is called Atlas TI. And we are going to put everything we do in this new folder. One second, see if it works. It's a little bit slow. Okay, here we are.
and the name, how we are going to name the hermeneutic unit. Uh, for the project of our study, I would uh, recommend you to put um, hermeneutic unit underscore the name of your company, for example, Port Aventura. Practice three or P three. To eliminate the last part of the name. And as we see, we have the name, the practice, and dot IHPR7. That is the uh, type of document of Atlas TI. And save. Guard that. Once we do this, everything we do. Is going to be saved in our computer, not in the university. So we don't have to care if something happened. If something happened, it's going to be everything in the university. So let's go into open something. For example, uh, once we have the document, we can open a document. How to do so? There are many ways. We can click on documents, new, add document. This is one way. I'm going to show you different documents. For example, the manual. In this case, we would have the transcription of our study and we would put here the transcription. But in this case, for as an example, I can open any PDF file. For instance, the, the manual or one manual in English, for example, we are doing the video in English. Open, document, and it's going to um, upload the document to the program. And we can upload as many document, documents as we want, okay? How, how do we know a document is uploaded? Because we click here in primary documents and we see there is one document called Quick Tour. How to upload documents? There is another way. We click here in, in, in primary documents. We can open the document manager. And in the document manager, we can see, first of all, that there are documents uploaded, the ones I have just uploaded now, the quick tour, where these documents Nowadays, there are no quotations. As you see, zero quotations. There are no families and so on. In our case, you would have a lot of documents here and it's going to give you information about the quotations and where they are and so on. How to open this document? For example, click twice on the document. Well, click twice and you're going to see that we see the document behind the manager. We can close the managers and we can see the PDF document behind. So we can go down and if this were your, for example, your um, uh, transcription, you would see everything in your transcription. And in this case, it's a different document, but it's not a problem. It's just a PDF document. And I'm going to show you how to do things. For example, imagine it's an imagination we are talking about, we are using your presentation. You are using your, sorry, the transcription of a focus group. And you see that, for example, in the first answer of the individual, in the first, there is one question. In the first answer, there is an idea, for example, it's an example. This idea could be related to the object. I can select it with the, with the mouse and click on the right uh, bottom and create a free quotation. If I do this, it's going to appear here at the, at the right part of the, of, the, of, the, of the file, of the screen, where there is something interesting there. there is, this sentence is interesting. And we can do the same. For example, if this paragraph here could be useful, we do the same, click, create free quotation. And we can go down reading your transcription, trying to identify these sentences, these elements that could be interesting. In our case, regarding customer experience, the different generators of customer experience, or for example, customer journey map. 
before the experience, during the experience, or after the experience, just to simplify. Imagine that once we have done this, we have the, our element, our document have a lot of sentences that are underlined. How to code this? How to put a name to these sentences? Imagine that this one, for example, that we selected in the first part, we, see, we think that this sentence is an example, it's not a real thing, could be related to a generator of customer, uh, customer, uh, customer experience, for example. We select again and we code it. Now enter code name. By doing this, for example, it's an example, we can say that this is relationship, uh, related co to customer experience, for example, to the staff, to the things that the staff that serve us, uh, uh, for example, is a behavior of the staff that can affect positively or negative the, negatively the customer experience. If I do this, if I create a code, this is different than before the quotation because the code has a name, as you see here. So I can use it many times and I can identify all the things that do or don't do stuff that could affect my customer experience. The same can happen, for example, in the second one, we, we can think that this is related coding to, for example, it's an example, the way, the way that I code, enter code, name, and I say customer journey map, for example, before the experience, or for example, awareness or decision, any, any of the stages I have the, the, the sites. If I do this, there is a new code called customer. And the codes appear here. The quotes appear here, or the quotes that I have used, sentences that I have been selected, and the codes that I have been used before, staff, and so on. So this is an example. Once we finish, uh, next week, we are going to better explain which are quotations, memos and so on. But this is a good first approach. Uh, at the end, well, the only thing we have to do, project, save, and we are going to save it in our computer. I hope you have understood this. We are going to close the program. We are going to close the, the remote um, connection to the university. And I'm going to briefly explain what do you have to do in practice three? So as I told you, we have seen the, a, com a computer assisted qualitative data software, in this case, Atlas TI. I have explained the things we have seen today and the things you have to, you have to do for this week between March 28th, uh, sorry, February 28th, 2022 and March 7th, one week before the practice, you need to create an hermeneutic unit your first admiratic unit, and save it, as I told you. A UH or HU underscore the name of your group underscore P3 or practice three. And start uploading your primary documents. At the moment, you would have at least one primary document that is the transcription you did for practice number two. Sorry, practice number one. So upload it, please, and make the initial test. Create some quotations some codes and so on. Try to think about customer experience and customer journey map. Try to do some of them, try to practice, to, to, to underline all the ideas that, that you think can be interesting for the study. Take in mind the objective of your study. Remember customer experience, customer journey map and um, customer profile. So once you have done this, save the, the hermeneutic unit and send it to me by email. Thank you very much for, for attending. And I hope you have, uh, you have enjoyed this practice and see you in next videos. Uh, in next videos. Bye.